much like mom's not home. Tell me why the best things feel so wrong. Summer nights. So what I haven't told you guys is we actually managed to snag Diego to come perform in Timothy Dry College at Yale for a college tea. And we're talking Diego from Costa Rica. Like literally, he has never been to America before. And he's here right now. I haven't seen him yet. He got in late last night. He's actually staying in one of the guest suites in TD. Um, super nice room, by the way. Oh my God, the guest suite is amazing. But he's there right now. Hopefully he's awake. Um, he got in at like 1 a.m. last night. I wasn't here. But I cannot wait to see this guy and hopefully we'll, we'll get his reaction. He's a character, absolute character. Here with Diego, he's finally here. I'm finally it's, here. It's first time in the United States. I've been in the United States for less than a day, and it's insane. I, I, I get to New York, that's something you're not ready to, like seriously. And now I'm here at Yale, everything is like, take, like Harry Potter. I feel like Harry Potter, and me as a magician, huh, I feel pretty comfortable. <laughs> Awesome, we're headed to Berry Brunch right now. Highlight of the year. So I just realized I'm talking about this whole Diego character and depending on which vlogs you've seen, you may or may not even know who he is. Diego runs the Magicians Without Borders program, which is a, a really, really great NGO. Uh, he runs it, the whole program in San Jose, Costa Rica. And basically we've been uh, touring with him through like the Yale Magic Society for like the past two Januaries. Uh, two years ago we're in Costa Rica, this past January we're in Colombia. Uh, we're hoping to go somewhere cool next year as well. But basically, we just we tour around, we perform, and we we teach magic to to kids that really need it. He doesn't just do that though. He's literally one of the most booked corporate magicians in all of Latin America. Super successful, and honestly, just an incredible performer. Like one, like he is absolutely hilarious. And the fact that he did such a great job just performing like in English, like not even his his first language, it, it blows me away. So. What's absolutely wild is one of the coolest things about Yale is the fact that I could go, me and Jake, we went, to, we met with our head of college, we're like, hey, like, we, we know this really great magician, his name is Diego, he's done a lot of great work with kids teaching them magic in Latin America and running this whole program, like, we'd love to have him come up to TD for a college tea, and she was like, sure, like, give me the details, let's figure it out, let's make this happen, so literally, what you're watching right now is Diego, his first time ever in the United States, it's, it's insane. We got him to come to TD and perform. Like, and he was at Yale for a whole entire week. And I, I wish I could have gotten more footage, but honestly, I was just enjoying his presence so much. It was, it was incredible. So as part of Diego's visit, he actually ended up performing a full, like, hour-long show in the TD dining hall. Obviously, out of respect for him, I'm not going to put those, those full routines online. Um, those are his and everything. Uh, but I will play a little reaction reel of, of all the, the crazy reactions for his tricks. Just to give you guys a little idea. Anyways, this was a pretty busy week. Not only was Diego here, but it was also Bulldog Days, which is kind of the, it's the visiting student days for all the kids that just got accepted to Yale. They come flood campus, uh, spend a couple days living with some current students and uh, having a great time and getting to see what Yale's really about. So I was actually hosting two students at the time and it was super busy. So the rest of the vlog is pretty much me trying to figure out how to balance all my activities with Bulldog Days with Diego visiting. So uh, here you go. All right, so uh, I've been having a little bit of a crisis because I told myself I was going to keep filming and document the last couple weeks 
at Yale, like we only have two more weeks of classes. And I keep having this obsession with trying to create a like an entire cohesive story with the vlogs. And as soon as I literally stop doing that, it's like, as soon as I like I miss a single moment, it's like the entire vlog just falls through and I like don't know what to do. Um, so I've realized, I think I'm just going to kind of do little bits of like snapshots throughout my day um, and try to put those together, maybe do some narration in between. I don't know. I just want to capture as much as possible because I'm realizing that it's the memories that really count and it's not necessary to have like one entire cohesive storyline throughout an entire day just to put up a video when, hey, I could cover like multiple days in a video, you know? Um, so I'm thinking about doing that. Anyways, it is currently um, Monday. It's literally the Anyways, it is currently Monday, and I've been super busy because it's been the first day of Bulldog Days, which, for those of you that don't know, is kind of the, the little three-day period when all the kids that got accepted to Yale actually come and visit and stay with uh, students. So I actually am hosting two Prefrosh. Their stuff is all right there. They're out doing Prefrosh things. I, they have a lot of events going on tonight, so I'm sure they're having a good time, but I'm in here stressing... We have like an ROTC bag drag tomorrow for field training, so I have like all my stuff packed up over there. Um, I really need to get to bed because I get up at 5 a.m., but hopefully I'm going to keep this going as quick as possible. But hopefully I'm going to keep this going as long as possible. The exposure on my camera is all messed up. Um, but it should be interesting. It should be a good couple last weeks, and I'm going to try to film as much as possible, capture as many of these moments as I can, and hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoy. Yeah, so currently... I am working on my military history readings for tomorrow morning. I actually have a section tomorrow morning after Air Force PT. So it's just 50 minutes of like my section, which is like the 12, 12 of us now, I guess, just sitting around a table discussing the readings. It's actually pretty cool because our military history professor is literally an absolute legend. Paul Kennedy, crazy dude. Oh my God, his lectures are so good. Um, and literally, you know, you know he's a good lecturer and you know he's a good professor when three out of the nine books you have to read throughout the semester are uh, written by him. So this is Rise and Fall of the Great Powers by Paul Kennedy. It has, it's probably the book that we reference the most. Like I said, there's like nine different books we have to read. Obviously we're not reading the entire thing. We just have little chunks that we have to read each week. Um, normally it's around like a, I don't know, 160-ish pages of reading a week. Um, a lot of it's skimming, you know, you can't, obviously I don't have enough time to literally read every single word and take notes on everything, but uh, Normally, you kind of put together what you learn at the lectures, the readings of the books, and uh, try to draw the big ideas. So I'll be working on that for the next couple hours, and uh, maybe we'll do a little time lapse. <sighs> All right, so I literally just got back from the Bulldog Days extracurricular bazaar. Um, so for those of you that don't know, it's like uh, pretty much, maybe I'll throw up some clips or some footage or some pictures of something right now, but pretty much every club and every organization at Yale sets up a booth in the Landman Center uh, at the gym, and you're all just trying to sell yourself to the Prefrosh and show all the cool and interesting things that are available to do at Yale, and it's, it's an absolute time. And I remember when I was doing it as a freshman and like a Prefrosh and everything, and it was insane. and. Once again, you know, I was there working the Magic Society booth, working there for the entire time. Um, I think I performed 37 magic tricks throughout the time I was there. Met a ton of prefrosh, took a ton of pictures with you guys. Shout out to everyone. If you're there and you took a picture with me or you came and said hi, comment down below. Let me know how you guys are doing because it was great to meet you all. And it's kind of weird, you know, like me just not being the type of person that like, I don't know, it's just weird when so many people know who you are. It's definitely something I'm still trying to get used to, but you know, it's it was a cool experience regardless, and you don't get that very much. Um, but anyways, uh, I'm back, and just because it's Bulldog Days and I have a ton of commitments, does not mean that the grind does not stop. Because here I am working on a uh, CSP set. Basically, it is. Uh, oh, I can see my reflection. Interesting. Basically, it's a it's for AI. It's a P set on Q learning which is actually a form of model-free reinforcement learning where it's it's very popular with uh, like video games, basically. So we're actually doing a, uh, a P-set for Pac-Man right now. 
Um, we did a piece of for Pac-Man uh, earlier in the semester, but it was all based on like searching and everything. But this one's entirely Q-learning, so we have a ton of skeleton code that's provided for us, but I have to fill in a ton of like pretty much every function that actually has to do the Q-learning. It is really loud outside. Um, so hopefully we can basically code an AI for Pac-Man make him go through the maze, collect all the food, avoid all the ghosts. And it kind of like, basically the way Q-Learning works is it's like a series of uh, different paths to a solution. And uh, depending on, it basically randomly assigns like like a path and then you have the, uh, you have the Pac-Man character kind of go through the map. And as he's uh, collecting food and getting points or he's following a path that allows him to collect food, basically each state and each, each each state and each action is assigned a certain Q value of like basically positive or negative of how like good that path is. Um, and basically you base once you find a path that works, it continually like develops and develops and you keep updating these Q values until basically um, you go through and you take the max of every single one once it's kind of ran enough iterations and you have find like the exact like kind of best path that will allow it to uh, win the game and get the best score. So it's pretty pretty interesting. Um, I'm really like kind of falling in love with this whole machine learning uh, part of the class so far, and hope to share a little more. And maybe I will show you guys once I get it up and running. Still got probably another four to six hours of work on this because I'm still trying to completely wrap my head around the whole algorithm and everything. But you know, it's a good time, and uh, I love kind of sharing little bits of CS and everything with you guys. So. Um, hopefully that made some sense, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. So I'm on my way to grab dinner with some people. TD probably not will be there. I'm um, gonna go grind in the buttery. And also, like speaking, like today's literally the first day I've been able to wear a shorts and a t-shirt, and it's just absolutely beautiful outside. I just wanted to say um, it's like a nice 72 degrees, sunny. I was wearing jeans and a sweatshirt this morning, and just had to take it off. Anyways. Can you, on the count of three, can you open your hand for sure, me? Sure, sure. <laughs> One. <laughs>